just going to go through some short scenes. The reason I picked this scene is there is both boom. The boom is pretty distant. Thanks so much for the tea cookies. Especially in this shot. How are you feeling? Better. I'm glad. Back in the old days when everybody wasn't lab for every single take, we'd probably, you know, use that and just say, hey, it's perspective. It sounds fine. But with everybody being laved and with auto align post, it's a lot easier to just grab both mics, play them at the same time, and uh, you know have both the perspective plus the close-up sound, and gets a really finely balanced between them. So to start with, I'm gonna the EQ on this boom. How are you feeling? Better. I don't really need to do anything for that. There's some early reflections in there, and luckily the dialogue editor has matched the room tone levels. They didn't match the signal level of the voice because for a wide shot the level on the boom is going to be maybe half or even less of um, you know a two shot or a close-up so dialogue editor matched the ambient noise which is great I really appreciate that uh, but the labs need to be corrected how are you feeling so that's really honky so we will do our preview dance how are you feeling how are you feeling how are you feeling and it's right how are you around. feeling how are you feeling? How are you feeling? How are you feeling? There's another one down How are you here. Feeling? How are you feeling? How are you feeling? So just before and after. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? So it got rid of that. How are you feeling? Honkiness. How are you feeling? I might bring the lows down a little bit. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? Let me experiment with just a sharper cut on this. How are you feeling? 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 You got to be careful when you're cutting because if you just add like, you know, too many cuts, it starts to sound really comb filtery and bad. And so it's always nice to bypass and just make sure you're doing good and not uh, harming it. I am going to write to the selection for that. That should be fine. That's her mic for all these. Let's check out Mama here. Thanks so much for the tea cookies. Thanks so much for the tea cookies. She's just a little bit boomy. Thanks so much for the tea cookies. 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 And there's a little bit. Thanks so much for the tea. At 454. As you can tell, I'm a Chevy GM guy. Right to selection there, and then I think that'll be it. I think I can. Go ahead and do my fader ride. Thanks so much for the tea cookies. How are you feeling? Better. I'm glad. I'm curious. <laughs> on this cut, I'm gonna switch my tactic a little bit and bring the labs down and focus just more on the boom sound because it sounds really good. I'm glad. I'm curious. <laughs> Do you think it's a good idea to have a relationship with both my sons? And I could maybe, you know, put that cup on PFX, but there's a little swallow in there, so it's... It's, it's, it's always a tough call with those. Luckily, Foley, I know they covered that, so I can maybe double them up and see how they sound. So let's see. I think that's okay. The integrated level was, you know, minus 30, so it's a little bit low, but it's a pretty quiet, intimate scene, so that's probably fine. Next, I know I've got some music in here, and I believe it's source music. Let's just see what this sounds like. So that's like a source, you know, golden oldies type cue. And it's full range. It hasn't been futzed or anything like that. I could take the stereo mix and put it on some music futz tracks, but, you know, I've got all the tools I need on these individual tracks. First, what I'm going to do, because it's a source cue, is I'm going to make it mono. Most of the music back in the 50s and even to the 60s, you know, is mono mix. Uh, so we're just going to take and mono all these. Actually, I can option click them to just put them in the center channel. And after making a mono, let's 
really band limit these and make it sound there's two futzes really it's the futz of the recording the the way they they recorded it even though this was recorded like full range good quality and then there's the futz of whatever speaker it's playing on and i'm going to say it's she's old you know she doesn't have a great sound system so we're going to we're going to really bring that down and we're also going to just put some some comb filtering in on purpose just to really kind of mess with it that one maybe I'll open up the cue just a little bit want it to be a little honky and then just to keep some room for the dialogue I'm gonna make another cut there some people will tell you don't ever make an EQ look crazy like that but if it sounds good it is good so let's just start with that and hear how it sounds pretty good the bass is super loud so we need to bring that down maybe a little more lead vocal See, that's pretty good I'm adding a new plugin and I just want it for this I might end up using it for other parts of the film but I'm gonna bypass it for every other instance except for this one time selection here. Let me move that out of the way. So you see it's bypassed, but it's on for just this. And then I think I need to listen to this on the guitar track. What's great about Sansamp is it, it doesn't take up a lot of processing. And it does compress it because you're adding some saturation, so it's just kind of cool. So now I'm going to option click, drag it up. Yeah, I want to change that. And I'm going to do that for all these. To double check it after I do this, I will click off and make sure. Let me just do a quick right to selection just to make sure. Okay, it's bypassed and then it's not bypassed. Last thing for a futz track is we need to put it in the room. And you don't have to do a ton to put it in the room. Sometimes you just need a tiny bit. What I'll do to audition this is let me get my sends. And I'm going to just start them out at about minus 18. Copy, paste. So I'm bringing up the send on all six of those stems. I'm still in preview mode. I'm going to hit P to go up to my reverb. Let's bring up the other channels a bit. I don't think I want the rears kicking in at all, so I think that's fine. And I will write to the selection for that. So that's on music A, because I've got a Q coming out on B, so I'm just going to ride VCA A down. That's the nice thing about having A and B splits, or even more splits, is you can grab one VCA and it'll take down a whole bunch of tracks all at once. Thanks so much for the tea cookies. How are you feeling? Better. I'm glad. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's a good idea to have a relationship with both my sons? You can see what I did. The music comes in over this exterior shot of the apartment. And then I wrote it down through this dolly creep shot as we got into the scene. And that can be a nice way to kind of set the mood. And then, you know, once we get into the close-ups or the meat of the scene, the music is just background. You know, it's part of the ambience, really. So I'm cool with that. I might bring it down a little bit more off the top. But I'm going to say for now, that's good. And you can see the VCA wrote the volume... On the VCA but then it does apply it to the affected tracks so now that I've got the music in there dialogues most important music a second I think I'll go to the backgrounds and we've got some outside backgrounds here 
Let's see what we've got. Just some traffic and air. Stereo traffic. Higher pitch traffic. And then what's this? It's like a slushy carbide. That's kind of cool. The slushy carbide is the standout. So I'm going to... Maybe I'll just bring that back a little bit. Actually, maybe I'll go front to back with this. That might be better. I like how that hangs over that cut. It's kind of cool. The rest of these, let's see how they are level-wise. Bring my control surface down where I can grab them. Thanks so much for the tea cookies. It's fine, and then what do we got for the interior tracks? We've got... Clock tick. Interior traffic. These interior traffics are a little bit too present, so I'm going to roll them off, maybe around 1300. So shift command C, shift command V, because they're both interior traffic. I think this is actually, yeah, this is an LCR file, so it's got the center channel and then the left and right. Um, and I don't know that I'm going to bring these back into the surrounds at all. The clock, let's see, this one, I think what I'll do with this... I'm going to put my control surface over to pan, and I'll just pan it off just a little bit left. The fridge, this is a fridge. I think I'll bring that up a little bit. So let me just write the selection there, and then take these for a quick ride through the scene. So really subtle, but I brought the clock up there um, about halfway through the scene and then pushed it out to the end of the scene. It's subconscious, but it'll add a little bit to the kind of uncomfortable feeling of the scene. So backgrounds, I'm good with that. Let's go, let's check out, do we have any sound effects? We've got this stuff coming out, which I guess I could grab real quick. Is that a truck? It's a big uh, dynamic change there from the quiet to the loud. So I'm going to pan and mix this, just this one mono track. Let's see if I got the panning right. That's probably good enough. I don't know if I like this layer being so stereo. So I'm going to take these off. I still want the panners to be locked. This is where having two surround panners like on one of the old icons is really cool or you can use the iPad app. I don't like having too much stuff hooked up. So I'm just going to do this using the mouse. Uh, the volume I was okay with. So I've highlighted the range. I have, see how I've brought both pucks over to the right speaker. All right, now let's play it all together. Yeah, that's nice. It's okay that they're not, you know, 100% locked together because like, you know, the exhaust and the tires will make different sounds and just having a little bit of spread and a little bit of uh, human touch to it is fine. Might want a little more low end out of the mono track. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. All right, so that's good. Uh, we haven't touched the foley on this. We mixed the dialogue. We mixed the backgrounds and music. Haven't touched the foley. There's no footsteps. It's just teacups and that kind of thing. So let's see. Let's see what this sounds like. What kind of perspective they've got on this?
It sounds pretty distant. Like they definitely used some room on the mic. So I'm pretty good with that. Uh, as far as reverb, I'm not going to add any. It sounds fine as is. I think I can just mix these on the fly right now. Right where they need to be. Thanks so much for the tea cookies. How are you feeling? Better. I'm glad. I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's a good idea to have a relationship with both my sons? see I really brought those sips down a lot sometimes I'll even take them out if I feel like you know they're they don't add anything to the scene here I think hearing them is good but um, you know sometimes it's just nasty hearing that stuff so I'm good with this scene the way it is right now I think uh, you know short scene but it's got some source music in there which is really cool to show so we'll call this done for now we've got a scene here where it was filmed outside there's traffic this is new york city so i think they're right underneath the landing path of the airport so there's just a lot of broadband noise in the production tracks we gotta get out of here what so this is without any backgrounds playing this is just the production and, you know, the kids in the background, I don't mind so much. It's It kind of makes sense. They're in a park. You can actually see, uh, in some, like, right there, you know, there's somebody pushing a stroller. So that doesn't bother me, but just that, you know, the rumbling in the background is, it's pretty rough. So we need to, this is one situation where you could argue for leaving it in. You know, that's New York City. That's how the city sounds. But it's such an intimate scene. I think we're going to need to take out some of this noise that's here. With this, you highlight the section that you want to uh, learn for the noise, and then you hit learn. You can loop it too, give it a little more time, and then take it out of learn. And let's play some signal here. We gotta get out of here. What? Get a boat. So I've, I'm only reducing 4.8 dB if I turn it way up. We gotta get out of here. What? Get a boat. And this is the sound I hate. It just sounds really watered down and filtered. And it's just lower overall, so now I gotta bring this up. We gotta get out of here. What? Get a boat. The dialogue has this kind of fuzz over it. So here's the cedar. We gotta get out of here. What? And then here's the isotope. We gotta get out of here. What? Get a boat. We gotta get out of here. What? That's cedar. Get a boat. And that's isotope. We gotta get out of here. So the isotope to me just sounds thinner and a little more fuzzy and digital artifacty the the cedar seems like it's taking out about the same amount of noise but it leaves more the body of the dialogue is that difference worth the crazy price tag on cedar for most people probably not but for me it totally is and uh, i'll use it whenever i can probably just to justify paying so much <laughs> but uh yeah so anyways i'll go back we're not going to use cedar on this we will unbypass that. I don't want to take out that much. We gotta get out of here. What? Get a boat. I'll, I'll try taking out six, around 6 dB. Now this is mostly boom, so what's great about this is once I get a setting for this that I like, let me just shape it a we little bit get with the Q2. Here. What? Get a boat. And it shouldn't affect the noise reduction too much. But I, I like that setting. I think that's a good starting point for this probably whole scene. Which goes to right there. So I'm going to write to selection. 
And now what I'm going to do, because I like those settings, I'm going to copy all the automation, go down one track, Option Command V, and I'm just pasting to all of my tracks. This will be a starting point for all these tracks. If it doesn't work, you know, I can adjust it on the fly. Get a boat. Before I ride this scene all the way through, um, one thing you can do with really noisy scenes is ride up the dialogue and ride down the noise. It just helps get you a couple more dB of room um, for you know the other, whether it's music or backgrounds. So that's kind of an old school trick, doesn't require any processing, it's just faders and fingers. We gotta get out of here. What? Get a boat. A boat. Go down to Florida, mm -hmm. get a boat, and hop island to island. How's that sound, baby? Where are we gonna get money for a boat? Hey, kitty cat, you working? Not right now, sweetie. Get the fuck out. Hey, kid. hey, kitty cat, you working? So this is obviously not a great, you know, sound. This is probably, they caught this on the boom. Uh, it's a little bit thin. Hey, kitty cat, you working? So I'm going to just bring up this shelf. Hey, kitty cat, you working? And then to compensate, I'll bring the... Hey, kitty cat, you working? High pass a little bit. Hey, kitty cat, you working? Not right now, sweet. It's, it's pretty noisy, too. This is where I'll start reaching for the other isotope tools, and, um, like, Dialogue Isolate usually will just clean up some of the yuck. Hey, kitty cat, you working? That's better. Hey, kitty cat, you working? Hey, kitty cat, you working? So this is where having the Dialogue cut to where it's, you know, one track per mic or shot is really nice. I missed some of his lines here, this guy here. I've already written the settings I want for this clip. I can just highlight down to Option Command, right to Selection. See, I'll put a little breakpoint there to let me know. So now, those settings have been run all the way down for this track. Hey, kitty cat, you working? Not right now, sweetie. Get the fuck out of here. Here, it sounds like there's some kind of onboard compressor on the track. Not right now, sweetie. And that's not me processing, that's just, you know, maybe they recorded it on like a Nagra or something old like that, that just squashed the signal down. Not right now, sweetie. Get the so fuck I brought up the end so the ambience flowed into his line a little bit better. Right now, sweetie. Get the fuck out of here. Just got paid. Because his line is pretty noisy, I will also grab this and just bring the reduction up a little bit. Get the fuck out of here. Just got paid. And now that's super loud. Just got paid. Just got paid. So I think I'll have to use dialogue isolate on his track too. If something is really, really nasty, one thing you can do uh, is make a copy and just crush the hell out of it. Like, you know, process it way too much. And that's going to sound really... Just got paid. Thin and filtered. But now you can highlight the original, unaltered, and the new one, and bring them both down 6 dB. And they'll sum together to where you have effectively lowered the noise 6 dB without all the artifacts. Because you've got the super sparkly clean kind of artifacty one playing with the noisy, grimy one. And sometimes, in a pinch, it's just enough to get it to work. Get the fuck out of here. Just got paid. Go before a beating catches up to you. Chill, man. So this will need it too. That's super. It's like planes and just everything going on. I think I'll do the same deal with that. So I think I had this at like minus 13. Render. Yeah. This one, I might see what it sounds like without the uh, 747 going overhead. Out of here. Just got paid. Go before a beating catches up to you. Chill, man. I'll probably need to do that to his lab, too. 
I'll just do a tiny bit though. If you do a little bit of each process, it uh, it can sound better than just hitting one process way too hard. So this is a spot where there's boom. This, this is going to be boom, right? Go before a beaten. Yeah, with a lav. Go before a beaten catches up. That lav is a little too... Go before a beaten catches up to you. A little too crispy too. Go before a beaten catches up to you. Go before a beaten catches up to you. Go before a beaten catches up to you. Okay, now well, let's go back here. All right now, sweetie. Get the fuck out of here. Just got paid. Go before a beaten catches up to you. Chill, man. I think I'll bring down those snow steps a little bit. Chill, man. They're good, they just don't need to be that loud. And then his whoa needs to come Beaten up. Beaten catches up to you. Oh, chill, man. Catches up oh, to you. Chill, man. And you're done hooking. What about Jack? That kid. My girl ain't no whore, all right? Not no more. Well, it does books most of the time. This looks like an alt that was cut in. Well, it does books most of the time. Trust me, you know? How much money he got? Got that plane coming back in. You know? That's a bad cut there. Well, do we fix the cut with better editing or do we fix it with... No, we're going to fix it in the mix. That's what we're going to do. So it's this clip here is coming in. You know, they're coming into JFK hot, so we just need to ride into that transition. How much money he got? So I brought up the reduction at the top of the clip so that the transition is smoother. Trust me, you know. How much money he it's got? It's better. It's still not perfect. Not a lot, but... I might do a little Three, more know? with. It's right here. How it's much money? That. You, you can see it on the, the scope here. It's me, you know? How much money he got? Not a lot. So that's a lot better. Most of the time. Trust me, you know? How much money he got? Not a lot, but. He will soon. That's another bad cut there. Not a lot, but. He will soon. I just brought the end of this clip down a little bit so it, it slid better into the next one, but Dialogue Editor just did not deliver on the scene. Not a lot, but he will soon. I heard him talk to this French guy. French fucking faggots. Well, it's supposed to yield six figures. Six figures? Mm hmm A month. And this one here. So there's a couple things going on. There's a jet going overhead. It's a little bit hard to see, but right here, you can see, you know, a pitch, and it's changing. That's the, like, engines of the jet. So I think what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to see if Absentia can nab it for me. Uh, we need to do Doppler Remover. Mostly I'll use this for the Doppler Remover and the Hum Remover, not so much the Tick or Broadband or any of this other stuff. And what's really cool about it is I can set the range. Let me go back here. And see so it's between 500 and like 2k so 500 to 2000 we want individual clip by clip a little bit of handles and now see if it'll do its thing all right let me just listen to this he will soon I heard him talk to so this that's after let's see the before he will soon. It's, it's better. I'd say it's like 40% better, which is probably all we need. Not a lot, but he will soon. I heard him talk to this French guy. French fucking faggots. Well, it's supposed to yield six figures. Six figures? Mm -hmm. So this clip here um, has a little bit of that high, crispy noise that I don't like. So I'm going to automate this fader up. 
Six figures. Six figures? It's like just the hiss, you know, that... It's that high mid-frequency traffic, so I'm just going to bring up a couple of these to help that out. Oh, six figures. Six figures? Mm-hmm. Oh, six figures. Six figures? Mm-hmm. And then I'll bring oh, the reduction six up. Figures. Six figures? Mm-hmm. Um, um, just to help it smooth it out a bit. Well, it's supposed to yield six figures. Six figures? Mm-hmm. And then this yield... It's supposed to yield... This yield, maybe because she set it into her chest a little bit, it's a little bit. Supposed to yield. Well, it's supposed to yield six figures. Well, it's supposed to yield six figures. Six figures. That's better. Just subtle change. Well, it's supposed to yield six figures. Six figures. Mm -hmm. A month. A month. And then this a month is a little bit too. There's that jet in there. Doppler remover. Set it from. 200 to 2,000. Mm -hmm. A month. So it's still got that low mid stuff in this clip. I need to bring the reduction up just a bit. Mm -hmm. A month. That's better. Mm -hmm. A month. A month. Mm -hmm. A month. A month. And this, his line here is super buried. Mm -hmm. A month. A month. Mm -hmm. A month. <sighs> Fucking Jack. We might be in Florida sooner than I thought. Hmm. So this Dialogue 7 down here is a lav track. It just needs a little bit of EQ love. A month. Fucking Jack. It's actually not horrible. Um, it's got a little more of the high frequency now. noise. We'll call that good. Fucking Jack. And I'm gonna redo my volume pass on that too. A month. Mm -hmm. A month. <sighs> Fucking Jack. We might be in Florida sooner than I thought. Hmm. That horn in there is pretty cool. All right, Dialogue has had one pass done on it, probably still needs some more work. All right, I'm just gonna fast forward through a bunch of this stuff. Here I'm going through the music, track by track, kind of like I did in the video before, doing some panning, EQ, and then a quick volume ride just to balance the stems out. Going back and fixing the automation that needs to be fixed. Similar deal for the backgrounds, panning, EQ, and automation, there's a lot more spot effects in this one, so I got to spend a little more time on each of those uh, carbides and special backgrounds. And after the backgrounds are done, you know, there's just a couple of Foley tracks and sound effects tracks that I go through and pre-dub each track on. I'm skipping through this because it's it just takes forever to get through, and I covered it in the first episode. We gotta get out of here. What? Get a boat. A boat. Go down to Florida, uh -huh. get a boat, and hop island to island. How's that sound, baby? Where are we gonna get money for a boat? Hey, kitty cat, you working? Not right now, sweetie. Get the fuck out of here. Just got paid. Okay, so that get the fuck out of here needs to be a lot louder. Hey, kitty cat, you working? Not right now, sweetie. Get the fuck out of here. Just Better. got paid. Go before a beat catches up to you. Chill, man. I think that background dip can be a little more subtle. Chill, man. Probably can use that big swell to motivate it, actually. Go before a beat catches up to you. Chill, man.
and you don't hook it. What about Jack? My girl ain't no whore, all right? Not no more. Well, it does books most of the time. Trust me, you know? How much money he got? Not a lot, but he will soon. I heard him talk to this French guy. French fucking faggots. Well, it's supposed to yield six figures. Six figures? Mm -hmm. A month. Fucking Jack. We might be in Florida sooner than I thought. Hmm. So you can see once the music comes in, I didn't ride the music up. It felt like it was a pretty comfortable level. Um, but once the music came in, I, you know, the backgrounds really dipped. You know, almost five dB. So just about almost half the volume they were to start and end the scene and that's a kind of subconscious trick you can use to really focus in on uh you know what people are saying or their performance or just make the world feel a little bit smaller now that i've ridden the dialogue up with the the music and everything else in that eats up so much the bandwidth we're pretty close to our spec so I, i'm pretty comfortable with that and we can move on to the next scene last example this one probably has the most mixing of any of the other examples, uh, there's perspective cuts on music, there's some pretty big sound effects, there's Foley, not a ton of dialogue. Notice I'm focusing on the music first. I haven't touched the dialogue or Foley or anything. Getting the music right is going to determine what I do with all the other tracks. So for now, I'm just going to have that start about that far left, not 100%. And then I'm going to copy my pan automation and just roll that down through all the other music tracks for this one. Okay, so we've got that. Probably we'll also want a little more verb on this because it's off screen. Okay, so we're there. So let's see if that works going from here. That works. I've got the perspective cuts the way I want them with the automation. And we've got whoa, 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 whoa. No. lav, real distorted lav. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. That's those sound devices limiters kicking in, boy. So I can fix that pretty easily with little declipper action. Bring the threshold down to where it chops off the waveform. Right and then if it's if it's way hot, like if it's zero clipping, you have to bring the makeup gain down to allow it room to actually declip and expand the audio out to restore the peaks. But this should work. So it did a little bit. Uh, the other thing we'll need to do with this is EQ it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, just get some, get rid of some of that chest resonance. Right to selection, good with that. And then the boom and the laughs playing together, I used to be against it, but you got to do what you got to do. Sometimes you have to use the laughs. And other times you don't. I should probably copy my plugin settings to this track too. Okay, that's done. Whoa, 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 man. No. That's too bright. That sounds like it's right next to us. It already has some nice reverb on it, so I'm not gonna add any reverb. Look, there's some, there's even some spot effects down here. Yeah, those seem like they were cut intentionally. I think I'm going to leave them stereo, maybe. Actually, I think what I'll do for this... I'm going to 
do -si do -um and pan that one pretty far right and that one pretty far left. That'll give it a nice call and response effect. I'm just going to do a quick mix on these soloed. I'm going to bring up that wrench drop a little bit more. There we go. Let's work our way up to the Foley. Let's check out these sound effects. There's a, some nice layers here. Let's see what we got. We got... That's the door. That one. And this one, both of these I'm going to send to the LFE just a bit. Probably about minus 32. The point is to not make people crap their pants. It's just to have a little support. This looks like the same deal. So I can write that down. What do we got here? Those are gunshots. And it looks like shell casing. Gunshots. Sometimes I'll send to the LFE, but not always. It doesn't always have to sound like a cannon. And if you've ever fired a gun, you don't really feel it in your chest unless it's a really big caliber, like a 50 cal. It's just an assault on your eardrums, especially if you're not wearing hearing protection. Don't do that. You will be deaf if you do that enough. But I think for this, it's the beginning of the movie. I'll send... I'll send this shorter layer to the LFE a little bit. Uh, those are bullet hits, and that's all we've got for sound effects. We do have these transitional sounds, the sound design. It's like some static and stuff. I think I'll pan. I'll pan that one to the surrounds a little bit as it goes. That's cool. And this one I'll go back to front. What about this? What does this do? I think this one I will take a cross. Probably fine as is. Let's go that one front to back. And this Polaroid, I'm gonna make that mono latch. Sound of my youth right there. Let's just quickly mix these guys before we get into the guns and stuff. On these stereo gunshots, I'm going to bring down the bass a little bit just because if you have too much bass, it's really best to just have the one layer do the bass and then have the other layers do the other, um, you know, mids and highs so that you don't have a bunch of stuff building up. Ooh. The goopies. So that needs to be to the left. This is where it gets confusing. He's in the right stall, the other guy's in the left stall. Okay, so that needs to be panned to the left. And then this will be center because we're back here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Now this, there's some Foley. I'm listening to everything, so the Foley is... But bomb it's creating a little rhythm I don't like. It's blowing its load too early with that kick. So I think I'm going to jump over to Foley and deal with all this stuff. I haven't added any reverb to the gunshots. They already sound their interior gunshots, so they've already got baked in reverb. I don't need to add it if it's already there. For this Foley, but it sounds like a small room. And I've already spent painstaking minutes finding the right reverb for the music. So I'm going to grab that. It's on reverb one. Edit, copy all automation. And from here to here, I'm going to fill paste. So now these reverb settings should match these ones. And they do. They do match. Let's see if that adds what I'm looking for. Do I want it to be LCR reverb, though? It's pretty mono. There's a little bit in the surrounds and the other channels, but I kind of like it. So I'm going to keep that as is. I really just want the footsteps to have it. All right, these props already sound... You know, they're not totally clean, but they they fit the stall, so I'm not going to add any reverb to that. really just want it for the footsteps. And that's the thing, you don't have to blanket stuff with reverb just because, well, it's in, in that room. It can be based on story or perspective. I'm just going to focus on these footsteps right now, and let me listen to these. I'm going to give them a little more weight. Maybe with a low shelf. There is kind of a... There's something in here I don't like. I think it's right there. A little more snap. I brought the leather track up here so I can grab that too. And since we're going to be focused on just these tracks, I might as well do this. Do the two finger dance. More leather. More leather. Oh, there's a little cut here. So I'm going to bring that step up and then the second one down. Hmm. Oh, bring that leather crunch up. <laughs> that's that's pretty funny. More leather still. Nice. I like it. Whoa, 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 whoa. No. No. That covers footsteps and leather. Mm hmm. Less layers, more impact. Oh. And then they got some gun foley here. That's good. Classic Hollywood clicky. Oh, man. They did do some bullet drops. That's a 223. Come on, man. Using a 223 for a 45, I don't think so. What is this stuff? The body hits. Yeah, that's good. I'll bring the first one down. Oh, 
fine. Oh, that's right, they did the dookie. Uh, it's funny, but I don't think it fits. We want the Rubik's Cube, and I'm going to take out that first one. We don't need that. Just let him think he heard something. And then that first head hit a little too loud. So here, I grabbed the fader a little too late. This is the one where I thought, like, just the timing felt off. And yes, that makes sense with the way the picture is edited. You know, we would hear his foot land, and then you can see the door flex right there, but it just doesn't feel right. Sometimes you got to do it based on feel, not what is scientifically or technically correct. That's way more scary than this. Ba bomb. That's not. That ba bomb is not as cool as just a boom. And I'm gonna get rid of that too. And then the gun and the cube will bring those up just a bit. And I need to bring that headset down. The second one should be louder though. And that third one should be way lower. Even lower still. There we go. That's What's this guy here? What is that? What did they label? The oh, it's the it's the cube dropping to the ground. That is really nice. That one I'm gonna send to the reverb because it's off. It's just out of frame, and it's kind of a focus point of the scene. And I think I'm gonna move it later. Oh, he doesn't drop it. Uh, well, we're going to make him drop it. We're going to move that sound that they used for it, slapping his pasty thigh to just a little bit after. That's nice. See, a lot of it's about timing. Originally, there this sound was back here. So there's nothing in that pocket. It just goes... Body, body, and then the cube hits at the same time as the body. There's a little pocket, right? Right there, when he lowers the gun. Which I could bring up this stuff, but that's not as cool as having this sound right in that pocket. Yeah. And you know exactly what that is. So that covers that. I didn't mix the cloth track. Let me do that real quick. Okay, we've mixed our Foley, we've mixed our dialogue, uh, we've mixed our music, our PFX are muted, and we did our backgrounds and sound effects and everything. So the scene has been mixed, and even though it's a short, let's see, how long is the scene, like a minute? It's, 30, <laughs> it's a 39 second scene. You can see how it can take a while to get through stuff when you have this many different things going on. And I, and this is a quick version of this. This is not me spending a lot of time on it. So it definitely helps to do that because when you focus on the details, let's just watch this scene and see how it plays. That's all I want to cover for mixing for this video series. Uh, there's a lot to it. There's a lot that I didn't cover, but you know, I tried to cover the basics of a dialogue pre-dub and going through the different 
food groups and groups of tracks and getting, you know, making sure you spend time on each one to get it pretty good, you know, and then combining them all and you have to readjust things based on backgrounds and music and all that stuff. But uh, the excitement of bringing all that stuff together to something that resembles a finished product and, you know, a real movie, as they say, that is the, the coolest thing about mixing. And it's, it's really what drew me to it. And I, I hope that these videos have helped you, you know, from, from the very beginning where we had a blank session all the way to now where we're really polishing stuff off and spending a lot of detail on, on levels and panning and EQ. I just hope that, that it's been helpful for you guys and that um, you get some value out of it, that it helps you in your prospective career or current career if you're, if you're established and you're just learning some new stuff. Or maybe you just do one thing and you're learning about aspects of the process that, you know, you don't have time for because you're busy working and making money. My goal with this video series was to show each step of the way from a blank session to, you know, pretty close to a finished product. Granted, the director hasn't seen this yet, and you can be guaranteed they're going to have all kinds of notes about stuff. Uh, I'll probably cover that in just a quick video on how to collaborate with directors and and uh, deal with notes and the creative process where you're working with other people and not just stuck in your cave by yourself. But I feel like at this point I've covered pretty much everything I wanted to on the sound editing and the mixing and the technical and creative aspects of that. So thank you guys for sticking through if you've watched all these videos. Granted, all these videos are showing you my way of doing things and there's many ways to skin a cat. There's gonna be better ways or faster ways or cheaper ways, you know, there's all kinds of different ways to do it. And I'm not spending a ton of time on detail stuff, it's just broad strokes, you know, get things 90% of the way there. I'll have a link in the description that you can click on. And I'm, I'm thinking about maybe doing some kind of class for people who want to get really, you know, hands on with this stuff. I don't have a ton of extra time, but people have asked me for it. So it's there if you want to click it. Uh, it'll ask you to, to sign up if you're interested. But if I do start accepting more students, then, you know, you'll be on the list and uh, you'll get some one-on-one -on -one time and hopefully I can help you with, you know, whatever your professional goals are. So thank you guys for watching and uh, I'll probably take a little bit of a break, but hopefully I'll have some shorter videos coming up soon. So stay tuned for that. Thanks.